Recording. Oh, 20 feet away. We are, what is this, 100 feet away and we can still talk on the mesh. <laughs> yes, folks, you heard right. After uh, reflashing the firmware again on my uh, Senna 30S, we now had functioning mesh and this new mesh 2.0 came out on the new 50 series but it was available via upgrade on the 30 and at least standing in front of Ivan's place it worked nice nice so are you ready to rumble so this would be the second ride of 2020 during the covid semi lockdown and uh, Jason was joining us Ivan once again on the 690, I had the 701 running, and we were actually going to meet a new guy. We had Frederick, who we were supposed to meet at the uh, Ultramar station near Ivan's. We hadn't met him in front of Ivan's house because we weren't sure if the guy was going to turn out to be an axe murderer or something, so we decided to meet him at the gas station. Ivan took us on a little shortcut through this uh, industrial park. And we decided that for everyone's safety, we would approach this new potential rider from the rear so as to maintain the element of surprise. We actually showed up a bit early, so we lost the element of surprise. But a few minutes later, Fred showed up on his 250 Honda. Then it was the awkward COVID handshake, elbow, whatever you want to call it stuff. Followed by the usual uh, butt sniffing that happens when uh, a bunch of new riders meet. Everybody talks about their bikes and their tires. So we uh, chewed the fat for a little while and then decided to head back to our old stomping grounds just across the river from Hawkesbury. It's always interesting when you go riding with someone new for the first time. And uh, Frederick had actually seen our YouTube channel and that's where he, you know, found out about us and reached out to us. Of course, the other people on this ride, Ivan and Jason, were also guys that had found out about the awesome players through our YouTube channel. I'd had a couple of online discussions with uh, Frederick, so I knew a little bit about him. He'd been riding a couple of years. He had a Honda CRF 250 with a rally kit on it but he kind of has the advantage in the sense that he's watched a lot of our videos so he actually knows all of us by name which also kind of raises an interesting thing in that um, he's I'm guessing already formed an opinion of what we're like and how we ride and of course the reality I'm sure doesn't quite match up to what we put out on YouTube because we do filter out a lot of things we say and do um, just because some of it is just not fit for public consumption and we never know when we get a new guy riding with us is he gonna fit in and I've got to say that the vast majority of people that we ride with probably come on one maybe two rides and it's not a good fit or they're not comfortable doing things to their bike or with their level of skill or in more than a few cases their skill level is just way above us and they like riding at a much more sustained and aggressive pace. So here you can see there's a turn off there there's a bunch of people parked and that's where a lot of the guys who have unplated bikes will park because they can access some trails here that you don't need to have a license plate on. And this area here in this hydro line, there's a short little section that runs from that parking lot and up some steep steps and some slimy stuff, depending on the weather. And then it dumps you back up on the road. And it's really only a few hundred meters long. Sometimes when you're going through here, you'll actually see guys on trials bikes because there's some neat rocks and they also play around in the woods. So here I can see Frederick had a little... Uh, a little issue there 
and I decided to keep going and you can see here yeah this is uh, this is a lot steeper than it looks once again through the magic of the GoPro it looks like I'm driving across Saskatchewan almost but that's a steep rocky climb and you can hear I'm on the intercom and the intercom so far has been working great see there's a, one of the steep steps which looks like nothing and up ahead you can see Ivan got a little bent out of shape trying to climb one of these steps and then I stopped and my foot was in midair and down I went and uh, here comes Fred so now I'm wondering Fred the new guy uh, we don't really know what he's comfortable with but he seemed to be doing all right so he uh, seemed to have a smile on his face so I don't think we were pushing him too hard this is one of those spots where if you have to stop it really sucks so uh, Ivan uh, you can see that's a tall bike Ivan uh, has to get his uh, stretches in before he we go on a ride to get his leg over that beast he's got the uh, extended suspension on it so it's taller than a stock 690 for that year and see that's actually a little pretty decent step there and I didn't have enough momentum and now I'm on my tippy toes trying not to dump it now the smart move here would be just to get aggressive and give it a fistful but uh, second ride of the year not quite feeling 100% comfortable this section is a nice little warm-up and it would also give us an idea of kind of where Frederick was in terms of his comfort level because it's one thing to talk to someone on the phone and they say oh yeah I like doing this and that and I've got this amount of experience but sometimes that doesn't quite match up with what you see in the real world and of course luckily for him you know it's not exactly like we're elite riders here so uh, Frederick even though he hadn't been riding very long was one of these kind of in shape athletic guys and uh, he did quite well although we did decide to stop here and just check in quickly with everybody to make sure everybody was okay we continue down the scotch road uh, you can see here this is the first lake you pass on the right sometimes this will all be flooded out in the spring and underwater but this was in better shape than it had been in a lot of years so someone's been maintaining this road and then of course we got back into this stuff where some machine had been clear cutting or brush cutting on the sides of the road and like I mentioned in last week's video um, there was a lot of development going on here next on the agenda was the little sand pit and I know you guys have seen this a million times so I won't uh, I won't focus too much on this but considering this was only the second ride of the year it sure was nice to have a spot like this little sand pit where you can uh, zoom around and get the feel for the bike again after a long winter and if you do fall down which uh, I did at one point um, nothing really bad is gonna happen it's uh, uh, you know very soft the speeds aren't very high at least what we're doing in the sand pit so this is still a nice little spot you know in the old days we might have spent an hour or more here goofing around now we tend to spend five minutes and then uh, move on down the trail we decided to head out through the back of the sand pit and hit some of the trails there uh, we've done these trails a million times but they're still fun and we also wanted to show them to uh, Fred the new guy so we headed down the trail at one point Ivan noticed that uh, Jason wasn't behind him so once again this is nice to have the intercom and the intercoms were working super good today we were having less crackling nothing the range everything was working really well so we decided that we'd go down here we weren't sure if he was actually ahead of us we came across a nice couple who were out hiking beer in hand and had a quick chat with them no no okay no so they uh, confirmed that no other bikes had been by here I decided to head down to Black Lake with Fred and give him the tour and Ivan was going to spin around and uh, go try to collect Jason Oh, he, he went down that ATV trail? Nice. 
Fred and I got to the big water crossing at Black Lake and the intercom was working well enough that way back at the junction, Ivan was able to talk to me. Pretty incredible that with no change in hardware, transmitting power, nothing, just a software update was giving us this big increase in range. That's working good, the comms. He Are was, you still hearing it? He was back at the end, yeah. Okay, good. Oh. He just passed, yeah? Yeah, I, uh, I, Jason, yeah, I see you. He just came out onto the clearing. That's pretty good. While we were standing around, a couple of ATVs oh, crazy. did the crossing deep. coming the other way, and we could see the water wasn't crazy, crazy right. deep. I mean, we used to Those do this water crossing pretty much every weekend. The thing is, once you get past this water crossing, you get He's to the real the water crossings. And at some point, it's just a lot of maintenance uh, and, you know, decent risk of flooding out your bike. So we haven't actually been through this in quite a long time. We should make a point of maybe doing it this summer. We backtracked. Uh, this is the road that skirts along the edge of Black Lake. There's a lot of people do some kind of rustic camping here on the right. There's a spot. I think that this actually too was part of that old railway system because it's been, you know, I think that railway was abandoned in 1980 something and the foundations of this are solid enough. It's still in really good shape. And then when you get to the yeah, junction the where we had turned right, which takes talking. us to Black Lake, if you were coming from the sand pit, you would turn left and that takes you down the rail line a little farther and you get to the section that we call the pipes. Oh, and we're at the pipes. Yeah. They went over the pipes. One of them did, yeah. yeah. Everybody made it through the pipes with uh, no drama. The water wasn't super high. There's times when it's almost up to the top of those pipes. And then it's a little, uh, a little sketchier. And the nice thing about being the first guy through is you can see where the rocks are. Although the water stayed pretty clear today. And then just a little farther down this trail, there's another water crossing. And this water crossing didn't even exist years ago when we first started doing this trail. I gotta say, uh, last year when the water was really high, this is where I dumped the 701 and flooded it out. And now the four-wheelers went through and it's nice and brown. It's not... That's okay. The next water crossing has always been here, but for years it was about an inch deep. And I think the beavers or somebody's been at work and now, depending on the water level, this can be a pretty serious water crossing. Water wasn't crazy high today. When you get to the end of the Scotch Road, you can actually just continue straight across. And there's a little trail here that will eventually connect you with uh, another road, which we were planning on going down, which takes us to some more trails. So I gotta say that, uh, you know, because we had someone new with us in the back of your mind during this whole ride, you should be kind of taking into consideration that person and keeping an eye on them. And so far, Fred was doing great. He didn't seem to be struggling at all. A lot of the times it's not a bad idea to put the new guy in front and then he can kind of determine his own pace. That wasn't an option here since uh, he didn't know where we were going and he didn't have intercom. I was actually riding behind Fred through this section, so I had a really good view on what he was doing. He installed it on this little climb, but uh, he was doing really, really well. We call this whole area that we're riding in White Acres, at least within our little club. And uh, we were heading down a trail. We'd been down this a few times before as well. And at this point, Jason was in the lead and the lead kind of changes i don't know we don't really have a system for who's taking the lead but you, it just seems to work out you can be in the lead and at some point you'll notice somebody seems to want to take over and they take over and 
It's not like uh, we have uh, someone plan out the day and we just blindly follow them. So everybody usually gets a chance to take the lead. And even when we do some of the organized events, when we do some of the GPS events, it doesn't really matter who is nominally the team captain. Uh, everybody's capable of navigating and taking the lead. So we just take turns and there's days too where you just don't feel like leading at all. And I've had days where I'm really content just to sit in the back and follow. And sometimes it's a little more interesting to be in the back because you actually get to watch the other guys ride. You get to see them go through the obstacles and the puddles and the crossings. So a lot of the times being in the back is a little more visually interesting. And because I'm always filming, it's nice to have other people in the shot too. The flip side of that is if you're the guy in front, you can get to the top of that hill climb or cross that water crossing and if you've got a little bit of distance between you and the guys following you, it gives you a chance to set up and get head-on shots of them doing it, which can also be nice for the video. Good back there? Oh, uh... Oh, a bit of swampage here. For this section, Fred was actually bringing up the rear and I was making an effort to keep sight of him in my mirrors. But then at one point, I lost sight of him for a while, so I asked Ivan to wait for a minute or two to see what was happening behind me. Give him another 30 seconds and I'll go back. I'm gonna let Honda guy go in front in case there's trouble. Oh yeah, there's some rockage here, that's why. Ugh. Up ahead, Ivan had come to a slime hole and there was a bypass to the left, which was a bit rocky. Probably. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, it was deeper than he thought, covered by the leaves, and he just went boom right Woo! in. <laughs> <I've noticed. laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice! <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm in the left, right? <laughs> that was a good one! That was funny. I think I got it too pretty good on cam. But yeah. He went into the leaves, oh, this looks good, and it just went floosh. <laughs> it sank. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! <laughs> he was a bit too optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it... Yeah, I got it, I got it. No, he's, he's got it up. We got out you to the main road, to... and that's when we realized, you know, we had left so Ivan's place, here. and unlike most of our rides where we go to Tim Hortons or A&W or somewhere and have a coffee, we hadn't had any coffee so far today, so we decided to set off in search of Java, and given the COVID situation, we didn't know what was going to be open. We came across a little kind of corner store that was open and actually had surprisingly good coffee. Now that we were fully caffeinated, the next stop was the abandoned ski hill. And I'm not sure what the legality of riding here is. I've seen a ton of people riding here, guys in ATVs, even trucks. Uh, we didn't see any signs, so we decided to give it a shot. And there's a couple of routes here. There's one that goes up underneath the old abandoned chairlift, which is really gnarly. And there's another one, which is to the right of that, which is a lot easier, but does have one section where there's a pretty good climb. So we all made it through that section, and when you get to the top, there's this big flat rock. So we, uh, we got to the top, but then we seemed to be missing somebody. Sure enough, Frederick had gotten stuck in this one section where you kind of had the choice of staying on the trail and dealing with these nasty, soggy ruts, or good, you man. could try to kind of bushwhack it through the tall grass, but that was also pretty soggy and had the advantage of having some nice hidden rocks in it. Whoa. <laughs> there we 
is huge. <laughs> well, that's the thing that yeah, hides a whole bunch of little. Because guys hidden, got stuck there and dug holes. Hidden, hidden, hidden gem. Yeah. Coming down can be fun as well. It really depends on how wet it is because you've got a long downhill and it's all covered in grass. During the summer when this grass is green, if this is wet, it's really slippery. And that's when I really appreciate that off-road ABS on the 701 because you can come down here and if you just use rear brake, you're gonna start accelerating and dragging and, and losing control. So you gotta use some front brake to keep it all under control. And with that ABS system, um, you can get pretty hard on the brakes. And if you accidentally cross that line and the front wheel locks, the ABS kicks in and you don't go down. So it kind of turns you from a zero into a hero. And I think if I ever ride a bike that doesn't have that ABS, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Fred was doing so well that we decided to just keep on going. So we were giving uh, him the grand tour of a lot of our favorite stomping grounds. Uh oh, is it a pee break? Pee pee? Huh, okay. Huh. Should have stayed right in the middle of the water, super easy, no mud. <laughs> and uh, eventually, we kind of completed a big loop and we ended up back at the old gratuitous water crossing. I did the crossing and got to the other side and once again the intercoms were working really well because Ivan was still quite a ways back and he got on he got on the radio to let me know that he had fallen and that him and Fred would be along shortly. I'm waiting for excellent video. Jason's going the wrong way now. All right, senor, I'm rolling. Make it spectacular. It's never good to make things too spectacular. <laughs> Fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got wet toes. You found that rock. Now you got I another one right rock. in front of your front tire. <laughs> Give her. Another big rock in front. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said spectacular. Nice. Are well, your, are the new boots are officially wet. <laughs> I'd help you, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's very kind of you. <laughs> Where's Chris when we need him? <sighs> Away! Sweet out next! <laughs> you may also have noticed the bugs. You can see in this shot there's a lot of bugs. Here comes Fred and he makes it look easy. Now at this point we had a little miscommunication. I thought we were going to loop back and head down the tracks and through the little water crossings and the pipes to the little sand pit and go back that way, but the boys had a different idea. So I took off on my own and it was only a few minutes later that I realized that yeah, I was alone and I was also out of communications range. So I spun it around, went through the water crossings again. And finally got in comms range where the boys were sitting back at the bridge waiting for me because they had no idea where I'd gone. This is where it's nice maybe to have a policy for your group on what you're gonna do 
if you lose somebody because we have found guys in the woods who've been separated from their group and they've either been stuck or broken down and it always amazes us like how how did this happen and I can understand if it's easier if you don't have an intercom but the way we work it is is that if you somehow get separated you go back to the last spot where for sure you saw the guy the last intersection meeting spot whatever and that's worked well for us the nice thing about having the intercom systems is that you don't have to get within five feet or a hundred feet visual range to reconnect with someone especially with this new mesh system with the old system he was you know if you disconnected reconnecting didn't always work and now with this new mesh 2.0 you get out of range and you just disconnect and when you get back within range it just automatically connects which is amazing so you find yourself disconnected you ride back in the direction of where you think your buddy is and you just keep saying Ivan are you there Ivan are you there Ivan are you there and eventually you get a response and uh, yeah it works really well so I gotta tip my hat to Senna so far mesh 2.0 awesome Dusty, dusty. It's dusty. You see funny things in the woods sometimes, and uh, a little farther along on another trail, we came across a perfectly serviceable lawn chair. And I mean, we're uh, quite a ways into the woods here. Oh, I'm having a rest, boys. <sighs> nice chair. Nice chair. It is nice. We came from that way last time. Yeah, because that was the bypass. Yeah. So Not sure how that chair got yeah, there, I don't know where that goes. but I think a lot of interesting things happen in the woods and we just see the leftovers. That's why it's funny going the other way. Was he So is it a bad decision so far? No. Nope. No, I've been down here. I think this is easy actually. Oh, and there you can see Fred got uh, into a rut and tried to climb out or something and ended up dropping the old Honda. Was it tranquil, no? Okay, no, he dropped the bike. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing because there's all these trails and they interconnect and some of them you've been on a few times, some of them maybe only once and your memory gets a bit mixed up because they all look the same. Oh, it just comes back to the same spot. Okay, we came through here that way. It's it, Yeah, because we came from here, but I think that's the other White Acres Trail. Let's go that one. Yeah, yeah we came here and we went straight, so this just this is just a bypass. So after a and little conference there, in this so clearing, we decided to head off down this trail okay. to the right. This was a really nice trail, and after we had been going down it for a while, I realized, ah, yeah, this is a trail we've done quite a few times in the past, but usually we're going the other direction. We passed a big log, and I remembered years ago on Dave's first ride, that's where Dave had had a crash. There was a little low wet spot, and that's a spot where Joe had gotten stuck on the X Challenge. And then after that was what's normally the steep downhill, which was now the steep uphill. And I do not know what this material was, but it was slippery. Ivan was in front, and he figured out he was on the wrong side. He tried to cross the rut, and down he went. <sighs> Nice! <laughs> Were you rolling on that? I was rolling on that. Well, keep that piece of it. Holy up. shite, yeah. Okay, you gotta ride that rut up. <laughs> I'll go move that log. Dude, jump that out of the way because I'm gonna see if I can. No, no. No. Okay. no. You're gonna need some muscles. <laughs> You know what, let's just back it down in this ravine. Let me pull this down. 
Okay, and just go straight back. Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. All right. Now. Now. Bring the front up. Yeah. Turn it. Yeah, roll the wheel. Oh. Give her. There, once again, you saw that technique of rolling the front wheel. It works amazingly well. Oh, greasy tires. Somebody came down here in a bicycle. Uh, to the left is okay. There are a bunch of uh, marks. Now, what Ivan's talking about are not tire marks. Marks are branches uh, that are going to hit you. Here is where I don't know what's better. <sighs> so far, so good. Don't get too close, just in case you have to back up. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, 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 greasy. Yeah. No, because if you can get up here, I think I can actually make it up easier because it's kind of a bypass. We were all sitting back watching Ivan's progress as he tried to pick out the best route. And any time he tried to give it any power, it just spun. Oh, I found a log. That's why. <sighs> Fred and I came up to try and give him uh, a hand and it's funny it almost sounds like the bike's in neutral because as soon as Ivan gives it any gas it just spins so you had this slimy clay stuff with this layer of wet leaves on it. Oh, I'm fucking sliding under my own bike. Shit this is slippery. Jason had actually been able to take the uh, KTM 500 up the right hand side along this drop off and I think because that bike weighs quite a bit less uh, he had made it up there. Also Jason being as tall as he is can actually keep his feet on the ground. Yeah I see a trail I think. Holy man this is uh, greasy slimy holy crap. I don't know I'm gonna go find out. Ah oh, Jason's coming down. Yeah, you're just a bit too low to cut through the forest. It was like what I did, I cut across here and you're right on the trail, it goes good. But, uh... Ivan got his bike to the top of the hill and so did Jason and then he had to come back and I, I had to get out of this greasy stuff and out onto the side here where it was a little grassier and there was some traction. I actually decided to go Whoa. back down the hill and then come up through this bypass off to the right. Okay, I'm officially very hot now. Eventually, after a lot of huffing and puffing, we got all the bikes to the top of that hill. My GoPro, for some reason, wasn't recording anymore, and I can't remember, because this was quite a while ago, if it had overheated or it was a battery issue. Uh, part of the problem with running external power to the GoPros is that the battery is actually constantly charging and it generates a lot of heat. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. And Riley. we ended up back at the gratuitous water crossing. And it was my time to hit a rock and not make it across in one shot. I think this had to be a record for the number of times we had crossed this little river. Now, if you haven't already, what can really help us out here is hit that subscribe button. And when you hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. And while you're here on YouTube, please leave us a comment. If you've got a question about the bikes, the gear, the GPSs, you name it, we're always open to answering anybody's questions. You can also head over to our Facebook page and that's a great spot if you have something you want to share with us. And if you head over to awesomeplayers.com, you can reach us via email there. You can find our email address. And you can also 
click on the order tab and that allows you to buy some of our stickers or our embroidered patches. As you can see, we actually went back down the rail bed again and went through all those little water crossings. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a really fun ride. And I gotta say, uh, new guy Frederick did really well. So uh, thanks for coming along on this ride. And I hope you enjoyed another little adventure of the Awesome Players Off-Road Motorcycle Club. Thank <laughs> you.